Welcome to Zipping TikTok Band. Welcome to Zipping to Circle Band. All right. Just like what my daughter said, welcome to Something to Talk About. And uh, we are doing a Let's Talk About the Difference for Tyene Sand. Let's go. Hi! <laughs> it's the first time I'm using that intro. Um, believe it or not, that was the best take. <laughs> I did like 10. And I had to listen to all of them. And I was like, oh, let's go on that one. <laughs> you can hear me like, say it louder. Come on, what are you doing? <laughs> You're blowing it! <laughs> All right. Um, I hope you guys love that. I thought that was adorable. All right. Um, like I said, so this is my let's talk about the difference for uh, Tain Sand. And um, yeah, this was a request from Brody Day, who requests a lot of things, and I usually do. Um, he's pretty good at it. He's pretty good at knowing what I was already thinking about doing. <laughs> like he he's like, all right, this is what he's looking for. That was what I was looking for. Thanks. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, I need a character. Brody Day's like this one. Man, nailing it. All right. Um. Okay. So, little disclaimer. I don't like being Mr. Negative Nancy when it comes to uh, the Song of Ice and Fire community. Um, for the most part, compared to other fandoms, the Song of Ice and Fire community is actually a really positive one. Um, at least the part that I stay part of uh that i pay attention to there isn't a lot of like why this stinks there is some but i kind of like hate that like if that's what you're looking for cool and if that's the kind of content you want to make cool you know like more power to you but i you know this is like my hobby and i want to do something that's positive i want to put out a positive energy so I, I don't really like to make like top five worst blah blahs it's not me you know um and if that is your thing cool but it's not mine um that all being said it's hard to talk about the the show for one that's one reason why i don't talk about the show too much except for these and it's hard to talk about the sand snakes and the dornish plot without being like uh because it is like the worst part of the show they completely destroyed it they didn't do the dornish plot which is why tiny sand's going to be a pretty interesting character to cover the difference because well they didn't do Dorn like they didn't do the Dorn stuff. So, um, if you never read the books and if you've only watched the show, <laughs> I got I got such sights sights to show you, such sights to show you. I could not make a good uh, pinhead um, saying it like that. So, um, the way it works is I'm gonna just talk about who the Sand Snakes are, and then I'm gonna do the show version of Tyene Sand, and then the book, and I'm going to cover it like it's one of my normal character videos, cover everything there is to know about Tyene Sand. And then at the end, I'm going to cover the difference, um, break them down, which is gonna be pretty much everything. <laughs> so yeah, let's go. The Sand Snakes are the bastard daughters of a Prince Oberon Martell. Uh, a collective name references the uh, Dornish bastard's surname, Sand, and their father's nickname, the Red Viper, Sand Snakes. You guys get it. Oberon's eight daughters have been born to five different madres. Um, well, uh, the different appearance, they are said to have their father's eyes in shape, if not color. Uh, in order, uh, you have uh, Obara Sand uh, by a sex worker in Old Town. She's the one who uses the spear. Uh, then there is Nymeria Sand, also known as uh, Lady Nim, a daughter of a volunteer noblewoman. And then uh, Tyene Sand, who we're talking about today, who is a daughter of a septa. That's our first difference. Sorella Sand, a daughter of a trader from the Summer Islands. Possibly a novice at the Citadel. Ella, and then the rest are from Alaria Sand, his paramour that we meet in the books and the show. Um, Elia Sand, Lady, uh, also known as Lady Lance. Cool. Lady Lance. All right. Obella Sand, Dorella Sand, um, Lorenza Sand are all daughters of the longtime paramour, uh, Alaria Sand. Lots of sand. Sandy. Got some sandy stuff down in door. Very sandy place. All right, let's talk about the show version. Wah, wah. All right, the Sand Snakes. In the show adaptation of A Game of Thrones, uh, she is portrayed by uh, Rosabelle Laurentini Sellers. Let's go with that. I'm not good with names. Um, Tyne Sand is the third of the eight daughters, bastard daughters of Oberyn Martell, also known as the Sand Snakes, which we're here to cover. She is also the eldest of daughter of his paramour, Alaria Sand, 
Uh, see, first difference. <laughs> Tyene fights using a pair of long daggers, though her other signature weapon is her skill with poisons, uh, a tactic she learned from her father. Like her father, she is known to coat her blades with poison, making a single scratch lethal. Um, you all know the Dornish plot. <laughs> oh, man, here we go. Um, when Jamie and Bran show up in Dorn, the Sand Snakes um, make their attempt to kidnap Marcella. Tyene battles Bran with the help of uh, Lady Nim. Um, well, Abara goes after Jamie Lannister. Although she manages to wound Bronn in the arm with one of her daggers, the battle is quickly broken up by Arya Hota and the rest of Dorne's personal guards. She also does a sexy dance for Bronn uh, in a, a jail cell. That's a thing. Uh, as he feels the effects of her poisons. Um, then it says a goofy line about bad cats. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying the line. I'm not going to say the line. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. Uh, the Sand Stinks get convinced by Alaria Sand to kill Marcella and then Dorn Mortel, Mortel uh, and then the rest of the Dornish plot with it. So that's the first card. Let's do the rest. After killing Ario, Doran, and the Dorn plot, the Sand Snakes. Uh, Alaria and uh, Olena decide to join Daenerys. Tyene, her sisters, and her mother are traveling with Yara Greyjoy's ironborn fleet through the narrow sea to lay siege to King's Landing. Shortly after, Yara's fleet is ambushed by the show version of Euron Greyjoy's iron fleet. I'm not going to call him Euron Greyjoy. I'm always going to say the show version. Deal with it. Fight me. Fight me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the character. Tyene and Ilaria flee below decks um, while the skirmish, uh, skirmish rages above. Uh, Tyene fights to defend her mother, but she is ultimately overpowered by uh, Ur Sho Euron's men. Uh, Obara and Nymeria are killed while Euron takes Tyene, Ilaria, and Yara prisoner. Your <laughs> show Euron probably delivers Tyene and Ilaria to King's Landing, bringing them uh, to the feet of Cersei as a gift. Ilaria spits at Cersei's feet, Patui. Uh, Welts Tyene starts, uh, stares defiantly at the Queen of the Seven Kingdoms. Cersei muses that she has contemplated hanging Gregor, having Gregor crush Alaria and Tyene's skulls the same way Ober uh, he did to Oberyn, uh, but while poetic, in Alaria's case, it would be too quick. Cersei then mockingly says that it also wouldn't be right to have Tyene's, quote, lovely face cracked open like a duck egg. Huh. She also removes the, or, yeah, the, as she removes the girl's um, gag and kisses Tyene full on the lips, Tyene desperately crawls out for, calls out for her mother before Kyburn gags her again as Cersei explains that Kyburn figured out the poison Ilaria used to kill Marcella, the same one that she just used on Tyene. Kyburn uh, assures Cersei that the poison will inevitably cause death but how long is unknown. Cersei then informs sobbing Alaria that she will now will now be forced to spend her days watching Tyene die uh, and decompose before her eyes, promising Alaria that they will keep her alive uh, to do so even if they have to force feed her. Jesus, man. <laughs> Once Cersei is gone, both Tyene and Alaria try to reach each other, but the chains are too short. They are unable to embrace or comfort each other in their last hours. That's all brutal, stupid stuff there. All right, that's brutal, stupid stuff. Um, So, yeah, that's all show version. Uh, maybe I could have made my... Could have made it shorter. I thought two was going to be shorter, but both of those are pretty beefy. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you need a little refresher of um, of the death of the Dorn of the the Dorn plot, okay. So now we're going to just talk about book version, and I'm already ten minutes in. Here we go. The uh, Golden Hair Snake. Yeah, see, look, she looks way different. Tyene Sand is a bastard daughter of Prince Ober and Martell as a Septa, um, and a Septa. Oh, okay. She is a, one of the infamous sand snakes. Tyene is fair with golden hair, 
um, and uh, deep blue eyes. Okay, she is the daughter of Oberyn and a Septa. She's not a daughter of Oberyn, and she is a Septa. No, no, the Septa is the mother. All right, Tyene is envious of Princess Marcella's Baratheon's curls. Um, her uh, dimples bloom in her cheeks, and she has a gentle, sweet voice. Despite her otherworldly innocence and pious persona, Tyene is regarded as treacherous. Her uh, soft, pale hands are as deadly as Obara's calloused ones. She uh, shares her father Oberyn's knowledge of poisons, her chosen weapon. Tyene owns a... Uh, uh, all right, a car is running into stuff outside, I guess. Clinging gown of pale blue samite with sleeves of Amirish lace, as well as cream and green gown of long lace sleeves. I don't know why we're talking about dresses, but there's some dresses she owns. Okay, let's talk about her childhood. <laughs> Youth in Dorne, when Taina was in the cradle, her mother, uh, Septa, read to her from the Seven-Pointed Star. That's like the Bible, right? Uh, Taina spent her uh, youth at the Water Gardens with her cousin, Princess Ariane Martel. Uh, the two uh, grew as close as sisters, learning to read, ride, and dance together. They have shared meals, jewelries, beds, and one time a flagon of wine stolen by Ariane. The two would have lost their um, virginity together to Andre Dalt as well, but he was uh, <clears throat> premature in the encounter. So they wanted to share everything together, and Andre Dalt was one of them. And Andre Dalt? Too much pressure for her, man. That stinks. All right, it happens. Uh, <laughs> so we're already seeing a lot of differences because Ariane Martel's not in the show. <laughs> All right. Ariana once uh, crossed the mander with three of the sand snakes to visit Tyene's mother. Tyene and Ariana once fled Sunspear to try to marry Ariane to Willis Tyrell of Highgarden, but they were caught by uh, Tyene's father, Oberyn, at Vaith. <laughs> Oberyn also uh, once brought Tyene with Ariane and Sorella Sand to Shady Stone, where he showed Tyene how to milk vipers for their venom, how to get some venom from some vipers. Some cool stuff there. All right. Um, a uh, viper's death. So now we're going to get into the story. Um, there's just like, she's not so much in the first one, but um, in this first one, but it, it's setting up. I pretty much have to cover all the dorm plot except for Ariane's plot. I'm going to kind of skip over that. But this is like both of the Aria Hotel chapters. I'm just going to explain them right now. <laughs> all right. At the Water Gardens in Dorne, Duran Martel and Aria Hotel get approached by Sand Snake Obara, the eldest of the Red Vipers Bastards' daughters. Despite Aria trying to stop her, uh, Doran let her speak. She claims the entirety of Dorne um, demands to know what Doran will do about Oberyn Martell's, quote, murder. Uh, Oberyn's like, it was a trial of combat. It's not murder. Uh, he informed her that he has sent a strongly worded letter to Tywin Lannister. She is disappointed and asks if she and her sister Nim can march, I wrote match, march on King's Landing and Old Town. <laughs> what? Yeah, let's just march on old time. Uh, he declines and tells her to go home in a way to word. While traveling um, from the water gardens to Sunspear the next morning, the uh, beautiful Lady Nim is far more tactful than her older half-sister, but no less resolved to seek vengeance for her father, scoffing at Obara's demand to go to war. Lady Nim tells her uncle that she needs only her sister Tyene, and the two will assassinate Cersei, Jaime, Tywin, and Tommen. Wow. Durin tells her that Oberyn wanted vengeance for Elia, but wouldn't wait. Nymeria responds, my sisters and El sh I shall not wait ten and seven years for a vengeance. Because he's like, Oberyn didn't wait for his vengeance. He waited for 17 years, Doran. Duran, Duran. Um... Because of me being really bad at reading, I know it's really funny I chose this as a hobby. Um, I I always mix up Dorn and Duran because they're Doran, Dorn, Dorn and Doran. They're ah, he's the Prince of Dorn, good old Doran. I always say Duran because I have to say it differently so I don't mix them up. All right, guys, we're getting there. We're going. We're keeping cruising. 
Throne Room of Sunspear. I love this scene. In the old palace, Princess Ariane greets her father and tells her that Tyene Sand, that's the character we're talking about, awaits him in the throne room for a private word. When Uncle Duran arrives in the throne room of Sunspear, she demands vengeance for her father. Wow. Over Martell, just like her other sisters. She sat on the floor working on an embroidery of Oberyn, armored in a in red atop a sand steed. She is gentle and asked about the pain of his gout. Hey, how's your feet? She offers the embroidery as a gift. Um, when oh, sorry, she offers the embroidery of Oberyn as a gift when it is finished, and she says to help you remember him. Durin. Uh, ensures her that it that he is not likely to forget her father. Uh, to that, she replies, good, or that is good to know. Many have wondered, like many have wondered if you've forgotten him. Um, I thought I had to sneeze there. All right. Do I? Will I? Nope. Okay, cool. Where was I? <laughs> many have wondered. Um... When Duran tells her that Tywin has promised Gregor's head, she feigns gratitude. Oh, that's nice of him. Then she says that a headsman's sword is no fit end for the mountain, and that she had prayed for his death for so long, and it's only fitting that he do the same. Uh, she says that, that she is aware of the poison Oberyn used. Uh, she also says that she wants war, but not like Obara, she says that they shouldn't march on them, just wait for the Lannisters to march on Dorne and kill them in the past, like the Dornish have done many times before, claiming that if they crown Marcella and name her the rightful queen, the lions will march. So she's trying to get the Lannisters, like, get the war to come to them. Joran says that he, um, he needs to think on it. This turns um, Tyene crossed, and then she clare, declares that he thinks too much and that some men think while others are, uh, while they are afraid to do. Afterwards, she feigns respect and then departs. Well, touching Doran's hand, Maester uh, Kelliot rushes to Prince Doran and it commands the, um, oh wait, where was I? Rushes to the prince's side to make sure she did not prick, or uh, that he was not pricked by one of Tyene's needles. Um, so Tyene, like, says, okay, bye, and, like, touches his hand. And the maester's like, oh, no! And then after she leaves, the maester's like, did she murder you? He's like, no, she just touched my hand. He's like, is there poison? <laughs> It'd be venom, Psh, maester. All right. <laughs> um... Where was I? Uh, rushes to make sure that she didn't <laughs> prick him. Uh, shortly after, Prince Doran commands the captain to round up and confine all the sand snakes, including Alaria's young daughters. He specifies that it needs to be bloodless. The uh, younger sand snakes are restricted um, together with their mother at the uh, water gardens as they leave. Uh, Sorella Sand to her game. So what I mean by that is, so uh, the main three that I just talked about, Tain, Lady Nim, and Obara, they get locked up, right? And then the younger ones get locked up with Alaria, so it's like not too messed up. And then the, the like odd woman out is Sorella Sand, and uh, he goes, we'll just leave her to her game, which we're all pretty sure it means that she is Alaras at the Citadel and pretending to be that person. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> Failed plot and a feast. Well, without the help of the Sand Snakes, Ariane assembles her closest friends as co-conspirators to help her implement in steam to crown up Myrcella. Uh, this, of course, fails and Duran locks his daughter up as well as her helpers. After several re weeks, Tyene, her sisters, and Ariane are released from their cells in the Spear Tower. Ariane is brought before her father. Doran informs her that Sir Balon Swan of the Kingsguard is traveling towards Sunspear. Ariane realizes that Doran needs her help to convince 
uh, Marcella to lie about what has transpired because Marcella got slashed in the face and her ear is gone. And they can't blame, like, you know, they can't say what happened, right? So they have to say Darkstar did it and also killed, like, our um, Aries Elkhart, which is only half right. If you believe that he is the one who cut Marcella, uh, some people think it's up to interpretation. It's definitely um, most believe that Darkstar was the one who chopped her ear off. But anyways, I'm not talking about that right now. Okay. Um, at the feast, welcoming Sir Balon Swan and his companions to Sunspear, Ariane sits to at the right side of her father, a place of high honor, together with Obara, Nymira, and Tyene, and Alaria, as well as Arya Hota and half the nobility of Dorne, Ariane and Doran witness the delivery of the mountain's skull. His um, his captain of the guard, Arya Hota, notes that many of the Dornish nobility present, including the bastard daughters of Oberyn Martell, that means Tyene, do not toast uh, the, uh, do not join in the toast of uh, pr that Prince Doran makes uh, to King Tom and Brathy. Yeah, so like he goes to the king, and some people are like, mm, nope, not doing that. And uh, Tyne's one of them. That's why I brought it up. Um, yeah, who got two more? <laughs> we got this. I don't want my. I don't know why my shoulder hurts. All right, Doran's plan. When the feast is done. Um, Prince Doran summons his daughter Ariane and the Sand Snakes to his solar and tells them that he has arranged that Marcella will tell Balon that it was Darkstar who injured her and that killed Ares Okar. Once that is done, Obara San is to lead Balon to Darkstar's lair at High Hermitage and destroy him. Doran also reveals to the Sand Snakes that, um, Sources loyal to him in King's Landing. I wonder who that is, actually. Um, have told him that Queen Regent uh, Cersei plots to have Tristane killed on the way back to King's Landing. An ambush is planned somewhere on the King's Road where uh, their party will be attacked by outlaws and Tristane will be slain. Blame... Uh, blame for the attack will be placed on Tyrion Lannister as the outlaws will be crying half man during the attack and uh, uh, Balon will claim to catch a glimpse of the imp. Uh, the Sand Snakes are disbelieving but Duran points out that the Knights of the King's Guard are sworn to obey regardless of the personal feelings of their orders and points out that Balon argued against traveling by sea to return to King's Landing as this would disturb the planned arrangements. So uh, Doran still does not want to defy the Iron Throne openly. So uh, Nymeria Sand is to accompany Marcella back to King's Landing and take the seat on the council. Tyene is to accompany her sister disguised as a Septa to gain the confidence of the High Sparrow. So just like that, we finally find out that Doran actually has a plan, right? So everything that I was saying, the Sand Sinks are like, do something, do something, do something, do something. And he's like, ah. and then finally goes, okay, Obara, I want you to go do that. Go kill Dark Star with Balon, probably get Balon killed too. And uh, you go um, to the small council and uh, just try to, you know, mess with Cersei and you... Go mess with the High Sparrow. Everybody, break. Oh, and Ariane, um, Mary, Aegon the Fourth. <laughs> Aegon, not the Fourth, the Fifth, Six. Aegon the Six. <laughs> Too many Aegons. Okay. So, uh, what's the difference? <laughs> like, what's the same? <laughs> that was my Shaggy. Like, what's the same, man? Uh, Tyena is a victim of the murdering of the Dornish storyline on the show. Jamie and Bronn never traveled to Dorne, so that changes half the stuff. And the Sand Snakes with Alaria never kill Duran, so Duran's still alive, so that changes the other half. I guess she ends up in prison in both of them at one point? That's something. Not only the story, but she looks nothing like her book counterpart in the show, and they also make her Elia's daughter instead of a Septa's taking away all of her faithful, innocent demeanor. They go the opposite. They make her a giant flirt, openly sexual towards Bronn. 
And uh, the one thing kept the same is her knowledge of poison. That's the only thing they have in common is that they both know poison. That's really it. And that they're Ober and Martell's daughter. They didn't even keep the name. The mom's the same, right? They didn't keep her personality or how she looks. That's it's it's very. They they went all they went completely the other direction. <laughs> all right. Um. So uh, ensure her death on the show is super crazy and brutal. It is extremely likely that it will not go down like that in the future books, since her and Alaria. Uh, never poisoned Marcella in the book. So that's another huge difference, of course, um, of that they are, uh, and that, and they are not mother and daughter. So that's also, you know, different. Um, I'm sure that if I cover any Dornish character, I would be hard pressed to find any similarities because they butchered the Dorn plot so dang hard. I do love the Sand Snakes though, and I am pumped to see um, what they do with them in the later books. Uh, it's awesome how Duran moves them all into a position like he's playing chess and he's putting Tyne uh, in the Great Sept is fantastic. Um, like I said at the beginning, and uh, this is a request from a commenter, Brody Day, and a fantastic one. He wanted an entire Martell week, but uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. I hope he's happy with this. I hope this makes him happy. That was a long one. I spent too long on the show one. I, I should have made that shorter. All right. Oh, okay. All right. We're good. All right. Almost 30 minutes. Okay. That's a tiny sand. So very different. Um, extremely, literally only two things. They both know poison. They're both Oberyn's daughters. Like that's the only thing that the book counterpart in the show have in common. Besides that. Oh yeah. And they both go to jail at one point. Who hasn't? Am I right? Okay, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Please click like, click like, and subscribe. Let me know what you think of my new intro. <laughs> and yeah, peace.